Hello, everyone. This is JT Keating, the Vice President of Product Strategy for Zimperium. I'd like to welcome you to another webinar that we are doing. Uh, we, we love doing these uh, informational webinars and talking about uh, different problems, different threats, uh, different situations uh, that, are, that are bouncing around um, and, uh, and helping educate some of you folks. And so um, classic stuff. Uh, we're going to try and keep it to about 20 minutes or so and then whatever kind of Q&A that you all may have. Um, uh, we will uh, have an archive version of this up on the site by the within a day or so, and we can make slides available um, to to people that would like to to see those as well. Um, with that, uh, also please do use the Q and A section. Um, we uh, even if you have technical difficulties, please just toss the question into the Q and A. Uh, the chat stuff doesn't always work well for us on these webinars, so we've just decided to use the Q and A stuff only. So. With that, I am going to uh, dive in. Um, the topic for today, as you can see, are what are some of the top mobile app security threats? Um, as you guys know, Zimperium is focused on uh, mobile security, protecting enterprises. That's what we've always been focused on. Um, and obviously mobile apps being a, a key piece of that equation. So I'll start off with the BFO, um, as I uh, lovingly was told a long time ago a blinding flash of the obvious. Um, and that is that mobile apps are, of course, critical to our business. We've got all sorts of different stats that are talking about the number of transactions that are going through mobile now, um, et cetera, et cetera, along with the amount of fraud that is going through uh, mobile apps. So as, as less and less stuff is in our wallet and more and more stuff is on our phones, um, mobile apps are obviously very critical. But when something goes south with them, you're going to be the one to bear the brunt, um, even if it's something that occurs, as we'll talk about, on the user's devices themselves that you didn't have any responsibility for. Ultimately, it will be, if something goes wrong, your reputation. We're going to talk about some examples uh, of where this uh, occurred. Um, it also goes directly to theft, whether it's you know cardholder data, intellectual property, whatever the case may be. And then of course, ultimately, there's real financial loss. Um, the loss directly, um, the loss from fines, we'll talk about some cases with that. The loss uh, financially of having to track these things down, sometimes having to do identity protection solutions. There's a whole bunch of different things that all come with this. So again, upfront, kind of set stage, mobile apps are very important, but obviously there's a risk inherent in them um, that you bear the brunt of. So where are some of the places we're exposed? Um, and I've got two slides here to show you some of the places we're exposed. This is the high level, you know, again, let's kind of take a little bit of a look at the forest and it gives it a, an easy visual as we go through some examples. Um, and then I've got the next one, which is the ugliest slide I think I've put into a webinar in quite some time, but I think it's important to do, um, so I'll show it to you, and it, it is very much the trees. Here's the forest, then we'll play with the trees. Um, so at the very highest level, you know, here's, here's kind of the overall chain, right? The value chain, if you will. You have your back office systems, which I also include things like your, your websites or your APIs, et cetera, et cetera, but you got your, your back office systems quite often either behind a DMZ or maybe partially exposed to a DMZ, but that's, that's in your headquarters, that's in your data centers, that's in your cloud, right? Then we've got the actual communication um, going across, usually cellular when it comes to mobile, um, and but also internet, obviously if you're using Wi-Fi, um, but there's the communication pipe. Then you've got the local stuff, the, the stuff that's completely outside of anything you're really responsible for usually um, when you're producing a mobile app to deliver to your, to your customers. Wi-Fi, and then the user's actual device themselves. And on the user's actual device, in terms of exposure areas, you've got your own app, which of course we can do app shielding, app hardening, et cetera. But then there's other apps that you have to worry about, you know, on that, on that device, because the consumer is the one deciding what they're going to put on there. Um, and then there's the actual device itself. What happens if the device is compromised? Um, you know, whether it's an OS exploit or a malicious profile, whatever the case may be. So, as we kind of roll through some examples of what some of the threats are and what some of the breaches have occurred, this just kind of provides a little bit of a framework to, to kind of think about. 
So here's the forest. And with all apologies to everybody that's on the phone, I'm going to now shift over to the uh, shift over to the trees. So here's the tree slide. The 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 tree slide that's on here um, is sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulty. There we go. Um, so here's a bunch of different, much more granular areas, right? On the server side, um, and and we, you know, for instance, uh, there was a, a a person just tossed a note in the in the Q and A, which um, is kind of what distracted me, but he's spot on. It could also be a router that they're attacking. They could be they could be attacking a bunch of different things, right? But this is the landscape, um, and one of the things that's interesting is as you're sitting here looking at all of these things, our our security evolution has somewhat evolved as is typical, from the left to the right on your radio dial of the chart that I had last time and even on here, we do as best we can on the server side. We've been locking down databases. We've been trying to secure uh, you know, the cellular parts with SSL and encryption and things like that. But then we keep getting further and further out and a large part of the risk is the device part in as opposed to the other way out. But what are some what are some like kind of examples of how some of this stuff has has played out, right? Well, I'm sure you guys have probably heard. If we start on kind of some of the back office ones, the ones that apparently are back office, we know this one is back office. The next one, there's some debate as to whether it's back office. Um, but in the British Airways example, what it was is there was an actual. It was both web and mobile because both web and mobile were ended up coming back to the same spot. In this particular case, what it was is that there was a, uh, an additional service that they put in a, a JavaScript library from a, a group called Feedify, which is basically for, um, for uh, uh, what do you call it, feedback and reviews. Um, well, it, it, it happens to be extremely well known um, that, that this particular third party service has been attacked by malware, particularly a, mag, a malware called the Magna Cart malware, which is basically designed to go out and actually start harvesting some of this payment information. So in the British Airways example, the, the stuff that was very public was all the stuff that had to do with the, this SDK, this library, sorry, um, uh, from, from Feedify. Our team, though, actually spent time looking at the British Airways uh, app itself. We have a capability um, that's called Z3A, which stands for Advanced App Analysis. Um, and it is an app reputation service where we can actually take any app, any mobile app, and break it down into what are its privacy and what are its security risks. A lot of times you can have a perfectly legitimate app like British Airways, for instance, um, but it has inherent risks in the way it's been developed because so many of these apps are basically Legos. Um, you know, if somebody needs a new library to get access to a camera, they just go on the internet, they find it, they throw it on, and they're off to the races, right? So when we did it, um, the, with the Android version in particular from British Airways, there was all sorts of issues, all sorts of issues. Um, uh, you know, for instance, uh, they were using an old Facebook SDK that was known to, to be vulnerable to hijacking. A lot of stuff was in plain text within the app itself. There was no SSL validation code. Um, so, so even on the, the app itself, there were major inherent issues with, with the British Airways, and it led to uh, an eventual breach. Um, and, and obviously, British Airways has been having to, to deal with that since. Another example is Air Canada and their mobile um, breach. Uh, and again, there's a couple schools of thought um, as to what, and it hasn't been publicly acknowledged by Air Canada yet, but basically they noticed a bunch of, um, from 20,000 accounts almost simultaneously, uh, logins that were coming that they determined were suspicious. Um, it's not known publicly whether it was the fact that somebody had already compromised their system and was pushing them in, or if they were brute force attempting passwords. Um, and there's subsequently been a class action lawsuit when we talk about some of the, uh, the ramifications of this stuff um, from some people that were basically highlighting the fact that uh, up until the breach, Air Canada was not allowing any kind of complex passwords. It was no more than 10, no special characters. So there was a bunch of things that, that occurred. 
And like we said, now they have now they have other ramifications that that come with it. So a couple examples on the server side of our radio dial, as we were talking about, uh, the back end side on our radio dial. But what about the last mile? What about the actual devices that you do not control that all of this stuff is being put on? Um, and so, like we said, as a general rule, a lot of companies have done a pretty good job and some have done an excellent job of securing the back office and maybe not having something like the Feedify um, you know, service that was exposed, right? Um, every one of them, if they're not everyone, the, the ones that are good, make sure that encryption, SSL, et cetera, is enforced. Like we said, there were some issues with that with the British Airlines one, um, which obviously uh, did not bode well. But as a general rule, those things are pretty good. And then if you go up to the upper right, most of the really good mobile app development companies at least take the time to be able to harden their app in some way, shape, or form, checking their own app for any kind of vulnerabilities. Like I said, we've got this Z3A capability. Most of our customers will use Z3A with their own apps to, to run it through and say, are there things in here we don't know anything about? And a lot of times they will find, for instance, maybe there's a library in there that's sending traffic off to a foreign country. They're like, wait, where did that come from? Let's close that up, right? So securing your own apps from an app shielding, app hardening standpoint is really good. But what about the Wi-Fi network? What about the other apps that these people put on their phones? Because you don't control the phone. And then what about the device itself? Um, we've, uh, for fun, and because you know people need to be able to kind of visualize this stuff, we have these characters we call the mobile menaces. And there's actually seven mobile menaces. These are the actual threats to mobile devices. And we've created these characters. Um, and part of the reason we created the characters is because part of our business is selling to enterprises to protect their employees directly. Um, and when we sell that, and it's using MDMs like Mobile Iron or Intune for Microsoft or AirWatch, BlackBerry, um, when, there's a secondary rollout where, okay, now the corporation bought, now how do we get the users to, to feel good about the need to have this app on their phone and explaining to them the threats in a way that, that they you know, kind of understand and kind of it's almost entertaining has been, has been very helpful. So we created these menaces. When it comes to your consumer devices, there's three primary categories that you have to worry about. Clearly, there's malicious apps. We're going to talk through a couple examples of malicious apps here in a second. There's network attacks, and then there's actual device compromises themselves. Now, one of the things that's interesting is on mobile, you guys probably know this, but a malicious app by itself is in its own container. A malicious app by itself can only really create fraud issues and a couple other things to people that actually use that app directly. Unless it breaks out of its container, and elevates its privileges in some way, shape, or form, which becomes a device attack. So in order to actually have persistence, and in order to actually work across and create fraud situations for other mobile apps like yours, if a malicious app comes on there, it has to break out of its container and compromise the device. So ultimately, the hacker's goal is a device attack. It's an elevation of privilege, and there's a couple big examples. One is just a straight up, exploit where you get root access. Um, the other uh, or another is malicious profiles. And Apple um, created this concept of a profile for legitimate apps that needed to have elevated privileges like MDMs, like VPNs, um, that needed to be able to go above and beyond apps. Well, the bad guys have figured this out. And because Apple has done such a good job of locking down the app store in terms of what malicious apps can get in there, the bad guys still want to do something, a la Willie Sutton, you know, when you're going to stop robbing banks, when you stop putting money in there. Uh, so now what they're doing is using malicious profiles. They just trick users into installing malicious profiles, for instance. So ultimately, when you now have your app that you've done a good job of hardening and you've already encrypted the network and you've already secured your back-end systems, you're now putting that into this very dangerous neighborhood known as your consumer's phone, and these are the major attacks that, that we have to worry about. So a couple uh, you know, examples here 
Um, first, from an app-based threat, Tesco Bank. Um, Tesco uh, had a, a, a breach of two and a half million pounds. Um, and it was, it was a, from a weakness in their app itself. Um, and, and basically, Tesco got hammered for this. And so one of the major threats, of course, is this concept of a malicious attack. And again, there's various different schools of thoughts about exactly how this happened. But one of the prevailing ones is this, that there was actually a malicious app that gained privileges. It actually got on the phones, gained privileges. Because it gained that elevated privilege, just like I was mentioning, it became a device attack. It was able to hook into the app itself. And then once it was able to hook in, it was able to inject transfers of the money that occurred. So it's an example of one of these app-based attacks. Now, the, the title of this whole thing is, you know, the, the top, you know, mobile app attacks or the, the mobile app security threats. There's a, there's kind of a, a, a running commentary or joke, if you will, that the only hacker you know for a fact you're going to face is a regulator. In Tesco's case, if you remember, it was two and a half million pounds that was stolen. Tesco ended up having to pay a 17 million pound fine on top of that. All told, it ended up being a $21 million uh, price tag that, that Tesco had to pay last year. Because another one of these main threats is you're going to have the other guys coming after you, just like with the Air Canada, with the class action suit. The British Airways, I'm sure they're going to be facing one pretty quickly as well. So something we, we have to deal with. Now, on this, on this front, one of the, one of the more well-known uh, examples of, of a malicious app threat, a threat on consumer devices, is a thing called BankBot. And BankBot is a, is a, a misnomer in many ways um, now. And the reason it's a misnomer in many ways is our guys, by the way, we've got the best mobile threat researchers on the planet, period. And I can say it because I'm not one of them. Um, I'm a big fan. Um, and, but these guys are really, really good, really good. Um, 2017, for instance, we haven't totaled it up yet for 18. 2017, they, they just uh, disclosed more vulnerabilities that got patched by Android, by Google and Apple than all of our major competitors combined times 10. Um, so these guys are really, really good. Well, they actually got a hold of one of the versions of BankBot, and there are multiple versions. They almost all operate the same way. But they got a hold of one of these recent versions and broke it open um, and identified over 600 institutions. We have been, uh, in the spirit, we figure they already know this, but in the spirit of responsible disclosure, we've been reaching out to each of these institutions. Now, one of the things when I said it was a, a bit of a misnomer um, is it's not just banks. The, the people that are in the, the, the mobile apps that are inside of this application that I'm about to explain um, that basically spoofs people into giving up their credentials, it's retailers, there's enterprise brands that are in there. It's basically anything and it just keeps, and it's, it's built to just keep adding the file of new brands that it's going to spoof. Um, so how does, how does BankBot actually work? Right. Well, this in this particular case, it is Android based um, and it is modified and morphed as Google has closed different windows, different services. Originally, it took advantage of the ADA capabilities that were in, in Android. But then Google closed that door. And so they had to find different ways of, of being able to do things. But what it does is it basically creates and I'm going to show you a video of it basically creates a fake overlay screen that will put right on top of the legitimate app when somebody goes to log in. So how does it actually happen? Because in Google, there are third-party app stores all over the place. They're able to actually download the, um, you know, users will go to a third-party, go get a game, go get a level, go get, you know, a, you know some, a timer, a note app, some little random app. When they install that app, what it does is it, it basically does social engineering and it tricks the user into elevating its privilege. 
again, it used to use ADA settings. Now as a part of the installation, it will trick the user into elevating privileges. What it does is it monitors for targeted apps. What it does, as soon as it gets on there, it will look, because one of the things you can do, even though apps can't play with apps um, in, in iOS or Android, in Android, any app can get an inventory of all the other apps that are on the device. So the first thing it does when it comes on, it looks across and says, hey, are any of those 600 mobile apps that are in my little repertoire here on this device? And for each one of them that is, it will go out to a command and control center and get the template of the login page for that app. Then it monitors for these apps to launch. When it does launch, it will pop the fake login screen on top of it, the user, gives up their identity or gives up their credentials. And then they're able to then start doing fraudulent transactions. So our, our labs guys did a, a quick you know, demonstration of this. Um, and so here's an example using a fake bank that, that we basically created a fake banking app. But this is kind of how BankBot would actually operate. Phone on the left, regular website on the right. So you see, it very quickly, we actually made it slower so that you could actually see it. The overlay gets put on top. Down in the lower bottom part here is the attacker's view. So right there, you just got the, the password. Now it's two-factor authentication, but since we're already on the phone, we can see that two-factor authentication code. Um, and right now, the user, of course, thinks they're logging in, and they ultimately are logging in. But now we have their user ID and password. So we can put that in. Now the hackers can go offline and obviously, you know, do it offline here. It doesn't even have to be going through the phone anymore. But again, because we're still on the device, as you can see down there, we already see the two-factor code that was being sent to the device. And we can automatically log in and start conducting any kind of transfers. So that, that literally is how BankBot works. So then the question, of course, is, well, all right, so you're telling me we got this dangerous neighborhood, the consumer's phone. Um, and what are we supposed to do about this, right? Well, this, this webinar is not designed to be a complete product pitch, but this is kind of where we come in. Um, Zimperium has one core engine. I always like to say, you know, things like Mercedes, Benz, or BMW, a lot of these guys are actually engine companies more so than even car companies, right? They produce engines and they put their engines in a whole bunch of different places. Um, we have one engine, it's called Z9, and it detects the attacks, the mobile menaces that are on those device, it is machine learning based to be able to detect even previously never seen or never known versions of device attacks, network attacks, malicious apps in this particular case. It's trained up in the, up in the lab, but it's able to do all of its de delivery and uh, detection on device without having to go to the cloud in real time. Z9 can be rolled out in one of two ways. If you're trying to protect devices you own, and the employees and the data and everything that's on it, that's a product we have called Zips. It's basically next generation machine learning, antivirus, if you will, for mobile devices. If, however, you have a mobile app, which obviously is the topic of this conversation, the exact same engine is in a software development kit, an SDK called ZApp for in-app protection. And that protection can be dropped directly inside of any mobile app very quickly and without any bloat so that you can now detect the, and secure those last pieces that we were talking about. You can detect as a part of your banking session, as a part of your retail session, whatever your mobile app session is, you can detect whether or not that user is on a bad Wi-Fi network. You can detect whether or not there's known malicious apps like BankBot or, or other malicious apps that are on there, whether they're known or not. You can detect whether or not it's been jailbroken, whether it's been compromised, whether there's uh, malicious profiles. You can actually detect those things as a part of the session. So in that case, you're not protecting the device because you don't own the device. It's the employee, it's the consumer's device. What you're doing is you're actually protecting your session and, and the, the transactions that your session is having with that device. So if we go back and say, okay, now, what might it look like if this fake bank that we created this demo for had Z app installed as a part of its app? Now, when we install Z app inside of the app, 
we work with uh, the, the app owners to say, what do you want to do? Do, do you want to notify the user when you detect any of these threats? Um, if so, it would be the app that would be doing the notification, not us. There is no, there's no GUI associated with Z app. It's an SDK that all it does is detect things. And by the way, it detects it out of band too. So it's not in any way, shape or form getting in the middle of, of, of any of the transactions. Some of our users, uh, you know, customers just want the data. They, they don't want to do anything differently with the session. They just want to know whether they need to raise a fraud score in the back end or whatever the case may be. Um, in this particular case, for a demonstration, we said, okay, let's assume that when we detect an app that we're going to tell the customer, the consumer, hey, there's something here. So in this particular case, as the user, which is on the left-hand side, as they click on it, you're going to see kind of what we're doing. What's on the right over here is the Z app dashboard. Um, and I'll show you at the very end of the whole presentation, we've got a page where anybody can go download Z app and start going off to the races today. So you can play around with it, you can go to your heart's content, self-service, go ahead and, and, and go for it. But this is the dashboard that, that the admin of the, the, the Z app and the app that it's in would actually see. So the, um, sorry, give my little arrow to the right place here. So person goes, clicks on it, Bankbot tried, but instead it basically said, yeah, no, that's an app you don't want. You got to delete that. And then over here in the console, you would actually say, okay, you know, here's, here's our little bank. What's the malware threat? There it is. And it actually gives you all sorts of forensics about where it is um, and what, you know, device and everything it's on anything you'd want and all of that is customizable too so if you're saying look you know for pii reasons and stuff we don't want to capture certain pieces of data that's fine as well um but it literally provides that information provides that information back to you so we have a a real world example here um uh, we we have a bunch of customers for ziap one of them um, is a major bank um that uh we're we're really big fans of um, and they allowed us to, uh, to document uh, some of the data that happened in the first 30 days of, of working with them. Um, we, we never, never named the bank. We never talk about the bank. That's, that part is irrelevant. What, what is relevant is the case study of, of what, what did we discover in the first 30 days of the rollout of the mobile app with this bank? What we detected was 26,000 devices we're actively attacked and we break, we break things into threats or attacks and risk. Risk is things like you're on an out of date operating system. You are more inherently risky because there's known vulnerability, known ex exploits that can capitalize on you. Okay. That's risk. A threat is you've actively been attacked. Um, and so in the first 30 days, we detected 26,000 of these devices that were actively attacked. Working with the bank, we were able to estimate that the potential fraud that they had visibility into protecting their customers against was about a billion dollars. So obviously a very strong business case because it's a brand new set of data you know, that, that nobody had had beforehand. It's a brand new set of visibility. Of that 26,000, here's the breakdown. 80% of them were device comp compromised devices in some way, shape, or form. 12% were actually on compromised networks when the app opened. Now, the app session was only seven minutes long on average. So that means that 12%, 3,000 of these people were actually on a network controlled by the hacker when that app session started. Clearly a dangerous situation. And then 2,000 of those folks had malicious apps on them. Now, I mentioned... In order, to, in order to really be persistent and to be able to, to, to cause chaos, even with BankBot and some of the ones we talked about, you needed to be able to break out of your container. So it's a good possibility that the 21,000, some portion of the 21,000 actually compromised devices started with those 2,000 malicious apps. But the ultimate goal to be persistent was those device compromises. That's the primary thing that we need to protect against. If there's a malicious app sitting on there that hasn't elevated privileges, it's not as dangerous 
as one that is elevated because the elevated can actually play with your app. A malicious network is obviously very dangerous because they own the traffic. Um, and so that's obviously something to, to consider. So last points about Z app, just real quick, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up and have questions. Um, we have huge deployments of Z app, so it handles the scale. It, it literally, as we'll talk about in the next slide, you could have implemented Z app in less time than it took for this presentation. It's not in line, it's very small, no app degradation, all the rest of the kind of fun stuff. And the customized in-app remediation, as we were talking about, in our case, we said we popped up a little window saying, hey, you gotta delete this. In other cases, it could be, we want to establish a, another VPN, we want to, whatever the case may be, you can customize that. So in conclusion, there's, also, the, the damage, of course, is significant now when it comes to these, not only significant in terms of just straight dollars, but people's confidence in the mobile delivery and the mobile connection that you're having with them. If people start bailing out of mobile applications, chances are they're going to go someplace else because they're not going to bail out of mobile. Mobile is, is here to stay. Um, but it's dangerous to, to you, your brand, your cost, everything. Um, attacks across the entire chain. The, the bad guys are still land and expand. They're still looking for the weakest point. So you need to figure out where in the entire value chain do you have inherent weaknesses. A lot of our customers clearly have said, we've done the back office, we've done the SSL, we've done the app shielding. We need to account for the devices we're putting it on, which is the reason that they've, they've done ZAP. Like I said, a million of implementations, very easy to, to do. And I'll leave this up. This I mentioned, if you, uh, if you want, anybody that wants can go download this and start playing around with it, drop it in apps and, and do it for free. Um, here's the place you can do that. Uh, Chris Dworkin, who was not able to, to be on this call, is our general manager of in-app uh, protection. So if anybody um, has specific questions from that or you feel free to ping me as well. So with that, I'm going to stop and see what questions, uh, what questions we may have. Um, we, we talked about the, uh, the router, um, the router being attacked. Um, you know, one question is, can attack, can attack router admin password? Uh, I think, I think the, the question is, you know, can, um, can you attack the router to get admin passwords, I think is the question. Um, and, and, and the answer is, is yes. I mean, there's all sorts of different ways to get admin passwords. Matter of fact, we did a webinar uh, with a great uh, white hat hacker out of Italy um, back in, uh, in the fourth quarter that you can go back and listen to. And it talks exactly about how to go after getting admin passwords. Um, so, uh, and then we have a question here, will biometric authentication thwart bank bot? You know, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I would need to think about that. I don't know, very good question. Uh, and obviously, you know, I, I can see who's asking the question. And so I will, I will get back to you directly. Matter of fact, I apologize. I think I still owe you uh, an answer on your, your question from, from the last webinar. Um, so I'll get back to you on that um, after this. I'll check with our research guys. Um, and then, uh, yes, um, there's a question. Can I check if our company is on the 600 list of BankBot? Um, you know, uh, feel free to shoot me an email um, at the jt.keating at Zimperium. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll let you know whether or not your company is on the, is on the list. Uh, let me see if we have any other questions. It appears we do not. So thank you, everybody. I will get back to uh, the gent on the uh, biometric authentication question. It's a great one. Um, and then send me the email about getting on the list. Uh, and with that, I will thank everybody for your time and hope you got some value out of this and hope you have a great day.